You know, I've been obsessed with trying to understand consciousness. I studied neuroscience. I really focus on analytic philosophy. You've told me that I have no chance to really understand consciousness because I am constrained with a Western understanding. How so? Well, you're trying to understand it from the, re the realm of the mind. And from when I mention the Western understanding, it's really the Western framing of the world. In the Western framing of the world, this is me and this is not me, and I'm trying to understand me by looking at the things that are not me. So if you're looking at trying to understand how things happen in science and how can the science, how can what we observe in science create the experience of the awareness of that which is, which we're aware of, which is the hard problem of consciousness, right? What that relationship yeah, is. The, the qualia, the, yeah. the feeling, the inner experience. The, Asian approach, the Eastern framing of reality is this is me, but I'm part of this. And I can't really explain me without explaining what this is. And so, and a lot of the exploration there is more on the inner side. So really looking at how things are, what are the forces that are motivating action and what are the feelings and how do I know what I know? And so arguably most of the things that we're talking about in terms of you're trying to know quote and unquote are an intellectual knowing which are very different from an experiential knowing. Like right now we're sitting here and we're in this conversation right now and we're talking about consciousness, but there's also the sound of the water here that you're aware of. And that awareness is a different kind of knowing. Like if you needed to know, if you <clears throat> knew that you had to go to the bathroom, for example, that kind of knowing can happen, which is actually very different from the in intellectual kind of knowing. Oh, sure. So we can know that one plus one equals two, for example, which is an intellectual knowing, versus knowing go you have to go to the bathroom, which is a different kind of knowing. But the feeling of wanting to go to the bathroom or hearing the music, the music in the background or the water in the yeah. background, has to be transferred into the neurological activity in the brain so what what you're talking about the experiential reduces to the those kinds of things that you can analyze on a third person basis well it would seem that way but that's very different still from the experience of that it, it, it is yeah. but the question is does that experience is that experience real veridical as they say is that is that true or is that just sort of a, a a frothy emotion that we have and has no capacity to understand reality of how it's happening analytically well you can understand things from an intellectual knowing obviously we're, we're, we do science we observe nature we build a mentally constructed model of nature and then we we act from that and we create ideas mathematics science a lot of that stuff comes from that Right. You've been in both worlds. Yeah, you, you, I have. Yeah. But if you look at it, and for me, the challenge for this is really tracing it to the origins. And so if you look at the origins of Western science and philosophy, it ties into, you know, it's the pre-Socratics. And so if you look at my email, Fusakoi, for example, <laughs> it is the pre-Socratics. <laughs> right. And the pre-Socratics are interesting because they were the first ones that tried to explain rationally how the world operated independent of any kind of supernatural power. Right. So from Thales in 585 BC till today, we've been trying to re developing and refining our, under, our mental understanding of reality. But if you look at the origins of it, it was really a bunch of people getting together to try to explain, you know, I seem to be alive, I, I hear water, do you hear water? You know, what is this? How do we hear this? And it's really about the origins of it come from the experience of all of this and then trying to come up with a language to communicate this but the problem with the language to communicate it is in order to communicate you have to create uh, where you have to use words there have to you know there, there's a format of syntax of words and semantics of meaning and in order for communication to be effective we have to have the same dictionary meaning the semantics in, in, in the use of the words. But if I've had a, an experience that you've never had and I try to explain the experience to you, I can explain it in many, many, it, ad infinitum, I can tell my head turns blue. But if you've never had the experience, you're not really gonna really know what I'm talking about. You're okay. gonna map it to, to different things right. based upon the words and your understanding of them to try to come up with an understanding, but it's not gonna be the same. The problem with that kind of formulation is that it's, what it was, and it's a model, it's an abstraction of what it actually is. So the sound that we're hearing right now is an experience, and you can measure it, and you can sample it, and you can, you know, obviously a 40, you know, from your iteration of science's perspective, an MP3 version of the sound is gonna sound a lot worse than, say, a, 
something that's sampled at 192K 24 right. bits, right? And so there's an iterative refinement of that. But actually what that sound of the water is, is, you know, you can replicate it, but what it truly is, you're tapping on, you're touching on the qualia issue. And in order to have qualia, you have to have conscious experience. And so something Certainly. has to be aware of that. And then the language and the science can then be used to describe that and to share that. And part of the problem that we have today that you're looking at with your God issue and, and a lot of the conflicts that come is the emotional attachment to the languages, to the ideas. You know, the fact that we just had earlier, we had a conversation about God and, well, what do you mean by God? Theistic, or, what, you know, what exactly do you mean? And, mm -hmm. you know, is non-dual versus knowing God. What's the difference for that? I mean, these are all semantical kind of things that are mental projections of our thinking that we know which is very different from being able to talk about the sound of this water. Right so, so you're saying that the, the, the experience almost cannot be put into language? Well, the spirit experience can be put into language, assuming that the two people that are communicating have the same dictionary. So <laughs> so you have to have the same dictionary. Right, right, right. And so similarly, if we're going to really talk about something, we have to have a shared experience of that. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, but uh, the, if I would have that, yeah. how would I be different in, in trying to understand consciousness? Would I, would I, I wouldn't reject neuroscience. I wouldn't reject analytical philosophy. How would I, how would, how would I be different? Well, the question for that is what wants to know? <laughs> right? And so something that's in the realm of the mind, it's like a scratch that you can't itch for you. Mm. It's always been like a scratch that yeah. you can't itch, right. you know? It's like, well, I think, no, but that's not right. Oh, yeah. And so it's the mind trying to strive and to, to find that. But ultimately, you know, it, it is the hard problem of consciousness. And, you know, in, 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 if you look at the processing of this, it takes a lot of energy and you're thinking and, and there, there's a lot of thought that goes in, deep thought that goes into it. But then, all of that is in the realm of the mind, and it feels very different from the experience of this, right? I mean, how do you describe, oh, you're tightening twice. Yeah. How do you describe the yeah. experience of this? And just from a experiential knowing, or from an experiential knowing perspective, it's clearly it's different, right? So like your wife, your daughter, my family, these are all in the realm of thought and the mind, and phenomenologically, they feel very different from the experience of the sound of this water, the feeling of the concrete, and the, the breeze that just happens to be blowing by right now. And we can talk about this <laughs> and we can observe it. And t part of that then leads into, you know, A, part of the issue that you have is that if you're always exploring and trying to understand here, you miss a lot of the details of here. And the wonder of life is in the details of here and the grace of... <laughs> <laughs> God and just the beauty of life and the wonder of existence is here. It's also here. Don't get me wrong. It's also here, but it's, it's this and it's the joy, the innate joy of being.